This video picks up where the Getting Started with ASF Part 1 video ended. So, you'll have to work through that video if you want to follow this Part 2. Note that we're using an Atmel AVR in this example, but the principles and procedures are the same for Atmel ARM devices. We're going to use the PWM mode of a GPIO pin, and have it gradually fade in an LED repeatedly. By default, the system clock of the UC3L064 is 115 kHz. But in order for the LED fading to look nice and smooth, we'd like to change the system clock to something faster. This also gives you a quick look at clock configurations as a bonus. Recall that clock configuration options are set in configure clock.h, which was added to our project when we added the clock control module to use in the delay function in part 1. Go to the Solution Explorer and double click on the configure clock.h file to open it. Select the 120 MHz RC oscillator by uncommenting the sysclock src rc120m define and comment out the sysclock src rc sys define. As the UC3L is specified to run up to 50 MHz, we need to subdivide the clock. By setting the logarithmic CPU clock divisor to 2, we effectively subdivide by 4 resulting in a 30 MHz system clock frequency. The peripheral buses must run at or below the CPU frequency, so these are also set to 30 MHz by setting the PBA and PBB to 2. Save the configure clock.h file and return to main. OK, now let's move on to configuring the PWM pin. To set up a GPIO to operate as a PWM output, we'll use the GPIO enable module pin function, which is part of the GPIO driver. The Visual Assist pop-up associated with this function describes the required input of this function as a pin name and a hardware function. PWM is actually used as an example in the function documentation. The pin name is, of course, the PWM channel output we wish to enable. To find which PWM channel we wish to use, let's open the UC3L0 Explained Hardware Users Guide and search for PWM. We find that PA13 is associated with the red channel of the RGB LED. To find the pin name of this PWM channel to use in our code, go to the UC3L0 Explained Board header file and search for the related define. We search for red and find LED red PWMA. This pin will be the first parameter of the GPIO enable module pin function. The second parameter is the hardware function that the GPIO pin should be set to have. For example, for a USART, one pin would be set to an RX function and another pin to a TX. For the red PWM LED, the function is defined as LED red function. This is then given as the second parameter to the Enable Pin Module C code function call. Now, open the UC3L064 datasheet, and let's figure out how the PWM is clocked. In the PWMA section of the datasheet, we find a block diagram of the PWMA module. This module is split into two clock domains. One is clocked by clock PWMA and associated with control. The other domain is clocked by G-clock, a high-speed generic clock associated with the PWM module output. Going to the Module Configuration section for the PWMA module, we find a table called PWMA Clocks. Clock PWMA is a clock for the PWMA bus interface. 
This is used to configure the characteristics of the output PWM waveforms, such as period and duty cycle. Since anything on the peripheral bus has a default clock configuration, we don't have to worry about this. But we see that the generic clock used for the PWMA is G-Clock 3. This clock will determine the time base for the counter, which determines the PWM output frequency. This clock we have to configure ourselves. Searching for generic clock, we find that the configuration of generic clocks is set up through the System Control Interface, SCIF. Let's go back to the project and open Project ASF Wizard and look for a module related to SCIF. We find a System Control Interface module. So, let's add this to our selection and click Finish. We've learned that driver modules need to be initialized through function calls. To initialize the skiff driver, there is a number to choose from. The one we are going to use is the one named Skiff Start G Clock and is related to a generic clock. This function takes in the name of a generic clock to start, as well as an option struct containing the generic clock options. We are setting up generic clock 3, so we add this as the generic clock number. Now, let's create an option struct for setting up the generic clock options. Click on the skiff start g clock function call, then copy the option struct type from the information bar. Paste this type info into the code above the function call and create a struct variable called gclock options. The type is of course recognized and colored blue. When typing this variable name on a new line and adding a period, Visual Assist immediately shows you the parameters that the struct variable contains. Select clock source as the first parameter. We can then use the go button or the Alt-G shortcut to go to its definition. Here we see that clock source is an enum, an enumerated type. Using the Go button, or Alt-G again, we find a list of clock source options. Let's use the 120 MHz RC oscillator we already configured as our generic clock source to feed the PWMA module. Copy and paste this into the code in main. Other options available are a clock divisor, a clock divisor enable, and the frequency of an external crystal we could use to drive the PWM if we wanted to. Let's simplify things by not enabling clock division, since the PWM can take frequencies up to 150 megahertz. We can now pass our option struct to skiff start G clock. As we type an ampersand, Visual Assist suggests the correct struct right away, since it is expecting a pointer to that particular struct type. OK. We must also add the PWMA module itself to our project. Go to Project ASF Wizard, search for PWM, add PWMA to the selection, and click Finish. To initialize the PWMA, start typing PWM. There is a PWMA config and enable that we will use to set up the PWM module. This takes a pointer to the PWMA module, a PWM channel mask for the PWM channels to configure, the number of counter steps in the period, or top value of the PWM counter if you like and the final parameter is the duty cycle. AVR-UC3 modules are prefixed with AVR32 underscore plus module name. 
visual assist confirms that AVR 32 PWMA is a valid module address, which we select. Typing a comma will highlight the next input value the function requires, which is a channel mask. Recall that the PWM channel we wanted to use was LED red PWMA. We pass the mask of this channel to the function. Finally, we configure the PWM to take in a full 8-bit range of values, and use an initial duty cycle of zero. We'll now gradually increase the duty cycle value to increase the brightness of the LED, in our while loop. We'll need a variable of type unsigned 8-bit integer. Let's call this variable duty cycle. Inside the while loop, we call PWMA set channels value. This takes a pointer to the PWM module, a PWM channel mask, and the duty cycle variable, which is simply incremented for every loop iteration. We'll reduce the delay to 10 milliseconds. Oh, and remember to initialize the duty cycle variable. The time has come to build and run. Click Start Without Debugging to build the project and load it onto the device. As you can see, the red LED is now nicely fading into max brightness repeatedly. Congratulations! As a final exercise, let's use the blue LED to add a nice pink hue to the red. Adding the blue LED is quite simple. Most of the work you have already done for the red LED. First, edit the mask in the PWMA config and enable, ORing the red mask with the blue. Then, Copy the GPIO enable module pin function, paste it to a new line, and change the references by exchanging red with blue. Finally, add the LED blue PWMA to the channel mask in PWMA set channels value. Build, run, and enjoy. Feel free to watch this video over again to make sure everything makes sense to you.